Salutations, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland, and here I am in front of Sir Charles Barry's house in London, the Elms, just on the south side of Clapham Common. So uh, there's not such bracing ventilation anymore, so I don't need the um, don't need the microphone. I just hope they don't start with that drill again. But I'm hoping the Zephyrs will blow coronavirus away. Probably a, a delusion. You know, we come a little bit closer. I'm not sure. Is it private property? Are oh, we not allowed in here? I think it's some sort of public institution is housed in here these days. There's a hospice nearby, as in where people could die in comfort. So, Charles Barry, he was an architect. You can see he obviously uh, didn't hurt financially as a result of his architectural endeavours. Um, anyway, he's born um, at Westminster in 1795, um, just across the street from from our Parliament. Um, and his uh, father was a stationer. The house he was born in no longer stands. It's uh, more or less where um, Portcullis House is, where the, the Member of Parliaments have their offices. And he was baptised in, in St Margaret's, which is the parish church of Parliament, which is in the grounds of Westminster Abbey, that enormous um, church right beside, beside Parliament. Anyway, what else about Barry? He was of distant French extraction, that's hence the surname Barry. Um, so uh, he went to school, not everybody did in those days. Obviously he went to school because he ended up as an architect. And when he was 15, he got an apprenticeship with, with an architect's firm. And that's the way you did these things. If you were a bright teenage boy, you'd be apprenticed to whatever sort of company it was and work your way up. And there's some sort of exams. Architecture was starting to be regulated. So when he was uh, 20, the Napoleonic Wars were finally over. So it was safe for the first time in the generation for Britishers to go to the continent. And that he did. Went on the ground tour. I'm surprised he had enough money to do that. But he went to Paris, and despite the war, um, he was filled with admiration for also aspects of French culture, but particularly architecture, and paid very close attention to that. Um, art in general, and he toured the Louvre, spent a couple of days doing that, sketching loads of things. He was also an artist, but I don't think he was, wasn't, wasn't professionally successful. I'm not sure he tried to be, just for his own satisfaction, painting and sketching and so forth. Um, and he traveled um, all the way to Egypt, if I've got that right. Uh, so he was quite a well-traveled man for the time. Uh, and then he went into arch agri uh, architectural practice. Uh, he greatly uh, admired the Palazzo in Italy, and he designed a lot of things in Italian Renaissance style, was moving away from neoclassicism. Um, and uh, he also liked, liked to design gardens. So he became very uh, fashionable, and he designed some sort of stately homes, High Clear um, and Cliveden, which is which is where you know Lady Nancy Astor had her had her place um, just to the west of London, um, where a bit of the um, bit of the Profumo scandal, Christine Keeler and all that, took place in that house in the 1960s, obviously long after Charles Barry died, um, and uh, helped to design Dulwich College. Uh, his most famous commission was for the House of Parliament themselves, because they burnt down in 1834. They had these sticks which they used to record votes. I don't quite understand it myself. And they caught fire. Um, and uh, that, that burnt lots of the building. Not the entire complex burnt down. Westminster Hall still stands, and that was, uh, that was uh, probably about 1100. But almost everything you see dates from after 1834. So I had to get the money together. Lots of people built, bid to rebuild it. He eventually won the commission. Uh, I'm not sure what they did in the, in the interim, where, where Parliament met when Parliament, built it, Parliament didn't stand. But anyway, he um, then... Um, uh, he, he designed it and it's built almost completely according to his plan. Um, 1840 work commenced and then he didn't quite live to see it completed. So they built almost everything he wanted. The one way they weren't completely faithful to it is New Palace Yard is not completed. One side of it is, was never built which he wanted to. They had to cut back for costs. So Parliament burning in 1834 and wasn't finished for um, about 36 years. Um, the, the new thing, as I say, some of it was never completed. but. Oh, it was function, function, functioning much earlier than that. So that is Sir Charles Barry. He married, uh, he had several children, five sons. Uh, four of them became architects, and there were other members of his family, like nephews and grandchildren, who either became architects or civil engineers. They built so much of modern Britain. And anyway, so this was a, quite a desirable uh, suburb of London, with a lot of green space, have been more or less part of London since the uh, late 18th century. The Clapham sect was here. So that's Sir Charles Barry, and um, architecture's not really my thing, as you probably know. And this is Clapham Common, this huge park here. Um, that was a, a famous cruising area for gays. If you see a red light, 
flashing out there in the middle of the night, don't go out onto the common. Well, you might want to, you might be into that sort of thing. So uh, that's my penny's worth about um, Sir Charles Barry, who was um, knighted for what he did. Indeed, he died in this house shortly after having gone to see the Great Exhibition in Hyde Park. Crystal Palace is always there, as it not in Sydenham. Um, and he's buried in Westminster Abbey, which is a very high accolade. Britain's Valhalla. Um, and uh, so various prizes named after him. He was, an elegy for him was delivered by the Royal Institute of British Architects. Okay, that is enough about Sir Charles Barry.